Welcome back to ADHD with me, Travis Mills. On today's episode, I got my homegirl, Rachel Lindsay, on the show. What's going on? Excited to be here. I'm excited to Thanks have you. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you it so much. It took you long enough to get me in the seat. I've been waiting to get here. Have you? Well, you've technically been here before. Okay. And I want to- We had to bring that yeah. up. <laughs> well, you, uh, you did a podcast here. And what's funny is that I actually just finished filming a show with, I guess, quote unquote, technically your ex-boyfriend. Yes, my ex. His name is Nick Vial. Yes. Uh, and for everybody listening, that show is called The Coop, and it's going to be out in the fall. Um, your ex plays a dead dude. <laughs> Hitting. <laughs> I had to lift him in and out of a coffin. <laughs> um, and so it's fun. I watched your guys' podcast here, and I was like, all right, cool. We're going to make it like 10 times more fun when you do mine. Okay, great. And I'm glad you said that. Yeah. Not me. No, no, no. Nick and I are cool. We have a good relationship. Yeah, but you you know, you have, uh, you have a crazy story, and I'm really excited to have you on because, one, for me, I tend to not believe reality television. Yeah. Uh, and you know, one, you're like, you're one of my friends that's about to get married to somebody that you met on reality television. Insane. And so I just, I was excited to have you on cause I want to pick your brain and I want to find out if all this bachelorette bachelor shit is real. Would it make you feel better if I told you that I used to be just like you? I mean, I, when I walked into bachelor bachelorette, I was like, no way. This is not true. This what is not real wanna, life. What made you even like want to go into it? It wasn't my decision. My coworkers were like, you know what? The bachelor auditions are down the street. You should go. You would be great. And you know, my honest answer was, I was like, everybody knows the black person doesn't go far. Why would I do that? That's all I knew about the show because I didn't really watch it. And they were like, no, Rachel, if you do the show, you'll go far. And I thought, why not? I've never been to a casting call before. Let's just see what all this, this is about. this is in Texas. This is in Texas. You're working yes. as a lawyer. Yes. God, so you're in a fucking office. You're like <laughs> handling legal cases and your homegirls are like, yo, go to this casting. Right, right. Shout out to my clients who were quite understanding of the huge detour I took. Do you show up with right. a briefcase? No, no, oh. no, 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 no. But that actually would have been really <laughs> badass if I did that. Then I can understand why they cast me. Yeah, so I went to casting and then this, the rest is history. It took off from there. Wow. All right. So you get past casting, you make mm -hmm. it onto the show and, you know, you're leaving. Where do they where do they do the show at? So they start here in L.A. or outside of L.A., um, Agora Hills. OK. And then you're there what seems like three weeks. But in reality, it's a week of filming. And oh, then it's only there. seven days. Mm -hmm. But it's wow. spread out over three episodes. So like to the audience, you think we're there for three weeks. So you're thinking, oh, three weeks is how long she's got to know these people or vice versa. If it's a guy, that's the lead. And honestly, it's seven days. Wow. Seven days. And then you go from wherever. Like you usually travel within the States and then you go overseas somewhere. So you're about to board a plane, right? Mm -hmm. Leaving Texas. You're going to LA. You don't know what to expect. You're about nope. to go on the first reality show. You're trying to find love at that. What is going through your head? What are you doing? Like, what's wrong with you? Like, why, why would you do this? What is my family going to think? What are my friends going to think? My whole thing, I was like, I cannot lose my job from this. I cannot embarrass my family. That was my mindset. That kind of went out of the window like three days in. Really? <laughs> I did. Like three days in, I was like, no, nah, you know what? I'm just going to have a blast and be myself. What did your parents say when you told them like, yo, I'm going on The Bachelor? Because um, you did The Bachelor first, right? I did. Okay. So my dad is a federal judge, just to put some things in perspective. Uh, I'm the only child that follow, was following in his footsteps as far as going to law school, becoming a lawyer. Oh, so, so like you were like the golden child. I was the golden child, but it was never for me completely. Like I always knew I wanted to do something different, right? Not go on TV and find love or anything like that. But I always knew I wanted to do something more out of the box. Yeah, yeah. Outside of law. So anyways, you can imagine the extreme disappointment in my father when I said, hey, you know that that um, how I went to law school for three years and worked hard, took the bar, became a lawyer. I'm actually going to put all that on hold and go on reality TV to potentially find love. It didn't go over well, if you can imagine. My mom was like, eh, OK, you know, that's cool. Oh. She was more supportive. But my dad was like, did you lose your job? Are you still going to have your job when all this is done? And I did like didn't lose my job. I still had my job. And what did your job say? My boss was like, go find love. Publicity. <laughs> I have a Bring progressive your business boss. Cards. Yes, I have a very progressive <laughs> boss. He was like, you go find love. You, you're, you can do this. And I was like, OK. And so I left. Oh, my God. On a mission to find love. So you show up the first day. How many girls are there? Uh, there were 30 girls, I think, 
on next season. Okay, I've never. Okay, I've seen like like excerpts of the show. My yeah. mom watches it. She's really excited you're here. By the way, oh hey she mom, loves you yeah. <laughs> all right, so you show up. There's 30 girls, mm-hmm. and you meet all of them first. Yes. What, are they catty? Are they? Well, you don't meet all of them first. So I'm like super skeptical when I walk in. I'm like, okay, I got my guard up. Like, I'm not here to make friends. I'm just here to get in and get out. Like, meet this guy, see if we have a connection. Boom, bam. I'm not going to connect with these girls. So you walk out of the hotel the first the first night. And then you walk into the lobby. And what's weird is people know that that's the hotel. Like fans? Yes. Oh, so, so they like, just hang out? Yeah. So you walk out and there are people that are like, woo, you look great. <laughs> And you're like, okay, it's happening. So you walk in and then everybody who's in your limo, which is usually like five to six girls are standing in the lobby. I remember I walked in and I thought, my gosh, these girls are stunning. I'm going to go home the first night. Like this is, I was just like, this is not for me. No one looked like me, I, like, at least in my limo. And I'm just like, oh gosh, I don't know if I'm going to like this, if I'm going to fit in. So you get in the limo, you drive up. You step out one by one, you meet Nick, and then you walk into the house, and that's when you see the rest of the girls. And it's so overwhelming. Just imagine like a sorority house. It's just like everybody's screaming, laughing, Ugh. drinking, except there are cameras and sound people all around you and producers telling you like what you can and can't do. And do girls, like I'm sure that they must like think of the most cringy shit to say to him when they first meet. Because like, like when you meet, yeah. you have like what, five, ten seconds? Yeah. Yeah, I know one girl. I watched one thing where she faked an accent. She's like, "Yeah, gr- yes. guys love girls with accents." And all. she didn't make it far. <laughs> <laughs> she was on after me. Like for me, I was like, "Okay, how can I get him to know me in this like ten seconds that I have?" So I'm a big sports fan. So I talked to, and I knew he was a sports fan. So I talked about fantasy football, like letting him know, like I know what's up, but then I know you like it too. And then I said something like, "I don't know, like drafting for your heart." I. <laughs> Some kind of like cheesy bachelor line in there. I got to shout you out, though, because you know so much about sports. And so just like hearing you talk about it with other people. Someone asked me yesterday on my Beats One show. They're like, hey, uh, Travis, who you got tonight? Who you got tonight? And at first I'm like, wait, what? Like, are you talking about USC? And they're like, no, no, finals. And I'm like, Toronto. I'm like, Toronto looks really strong. And they're like, oh, really? Really? And I'm like, yeah, man, my money's on Toronto. And they won. And I'm like, shout out, Rachel. <laughs> I can be your friend that can help you yes, out. Yes, I'm going to text kind of you when like cool people hit me up about sports, yeah. and I'll just, I'll just, you'll just, I'll speak through you. I'm like, here are your three points. This is all you need to say. Yes, yes. All right. So you tell Nick you're going to draft his heart. Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> uh, and then how soon, you know, how soon into the show are you guys like, you know, spending time together and like actually getting to know each other? Yeah. So I, we the after the. Like you're all in the room together and you're like fighting for time. Like, can I steal you for a second? Like they do the Saturday Night Live skits. Can I steal you for a second? And then like you get 10 minutes with them and then somebody else steps steps in. So I had a pretty like good connection with Nick from the beginning. And then he gave me his first rose. It's called like the first impression rose. I feel like I'm schooling you. I'm giving you yeah, Bachelor, this is 101. Bachelor 101. 101. So all my guy listeners are, are they're taking this in too. You know, this is <laughs> more guys watch the show than women. You're lying. I, like they watch with their girls Very or they're true. trying to impress. It's like Very true. sports, right? Like girls watch sports to impress their guys. I feel like guys watch The Bachelor, The Bachelorette to impress their girl. You and I were somewhere and I'll never forget that some like 60 year old dude recognized you and then told, he was the first one and then told his wife. And I was like, what? See? Yeah, because he's watching it with her. Like guys come up to me and they're like, hey, can you take a picture with me so I can send my My, fiance or my girl? I'm like, yeah, I'm here to help. Like, tell me what you need me to do. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so Nick gave me his first rose and then like it's before you have the rose ceremony where you stand up there and you wait to get a rose, he can give out one rose to who he's most impressed by from the first night. So, I mean, of course, he gave it to you me. You took it. Wow. <laughs> and yeah, after that, like we were good. But it's crazy, like going back to what you were saying about being skeptical and stuff, because when I walked in, I was like, I'm not going to like any of these girls. I'm not going to connect with this guy. I'm not going to trust anybody. And in 24 hours, that was completely flipped for me. And so, so you like you're like oh shit this this is real yeah I, I still was questioning everybody I was like did y'all tell him to give me that rose is that for and they were like you need to calm down so producers this is real. Aren't, they're not like feeding you lines or they're not like they're not like yo you're gonna do this to piss her off no it's more like they're really good at what they do it's more of like 
did you see when this happened or maybe like did you see the way he looked at oh, you like so what did you think about that pot. they stir the pot a little bit so they're like yeah we had rachel back here she's not the biggest fan of yours you know she thinks that uh you got a high-pitched voice and that you're kind of annoying <laughs> what do you think about that yeah. and oh, so shit. i never really like i kind of caught on to stuff like that but a lot of people fall into it and then they'll start talking about the person and of course then they'll play that and it just starts all this drama i didn't have a lot of drama but there was definitely drama. Do you forget that the cameras are there? Yeah. Because it's the concept, the way it's all set up, you're just dying to have 10, 15 minutes with whoever the lead is. So you don't get caught up in the camera because you're like, I got to focus on him. I got to impress him for these few minutes that I have. And then you just kind of walk away. And then after that, like you're drinking, you're having a good time with the girls. Yeah. You just want to have fun. So it's like you can't worry about the camera being there. So you're obviously not engaged to Nick. So <laughs> No, 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 no. Yes, let's put that out there. <laughs> so what, okay, so how, how does that season, you know, that whole experience end? What happens? How far did you get? I got down to the top three. Okay. And we were in Finland, which was just a crazy time because like the so election was going on. you got to travel a lot. Mm -hmm. You got to go to a bunch of places that you've never been before. Yeah, we went to places I hadn't been. We went to St. Thomas and then we went to Finland on oh. his season that I hadn't been before. So that was fun. Um, Finland, it was it was different. Do you guys just have like a bachelor jet, like where everyone just hops no. in? No. So check this out, we fly commercial, and we when we fly in big groups, people, we stand out, right? Because there are all these well, girls. Like 30 and, of you, yeah. And like, the girls are pretty, and like they're fit, and then they're like, people will, will stop us and they're like, what are y'all doing? Who are y'all? So we're like, oh, we're a bachelorette party. Or we say we're tennis players. Oh, so people think you're really going to go get me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like a whole thing. Like people will always stop you and are like, oh, you are, y'all look great. Where are you heading? Who are y'all? Where are you traveling? People are so nosy. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, made it to the top three, got sent home and I made it to the fantasy suites. So here, when you get to the top three, okay. the fantasy suites where it's the first time that the camera isn't with Sounds you sexual. and you get to spend the night Sounds together there's some some sexuality implied here for sure yes but it's also the time where you get to talk about anything you want with no cameras so with no like, one Yo, producing you yeah oh yeah yeah so for me i was like okay this is great like i have all these things i wanted to say and i passed out like i drank <laughs> so much <laughs> i passed out i got the best sleep ever woke up the next day and i was like fuck i'm going home tonight because I fell asleep. And Damn. I did. And I got sent home. You did? I got sent home. But it was great. I mean, shortly after that, they asked if I want to do The Bachelorette. So I was going to say, so you leave, you go back home. Obviously, you go back to your job. Mm -hmm, yeah. So are, every, are, are people just like freaking out? Like like when you're like handling their case? Like you like, did you take a case and the juror, like the jurors are like, huge fan. No. Wish you would have won. It's so weird. I was in trial but while The Bachelor was airing. So it's like, I'm on TV, prime time, every Monday night. And I remember we questioned the jury and they're, you know, like the lead counsel. Uh, I was number two chair. Number one was like, do you know Rachel Lindsay? And they were like, no. And he's like, you never seen her before? Nothing. And they were like, nope. It wasn't until the end of the trial where I was about to be now announced as Bachelorette. And I went on Kimmel and then I did Good Morning America. And then I came back to get the verdict. And the oh judge was God. like, the bailiff was like, you need to come here. And to the judge. And she was like, why didn't you tell us you were on The Bachelor? And I was like, well, we asked the question. You know, nobody said anything. So we didn't think that it was necessary yeah, you to say all to that. You disclose that, right? Yeah. She wanted like an autograph and a picture. Damn. Did when it was it over. Her? Did you give it to her? Yeah, yeah. It was over. When it was over, I did. <laughs> did you guys win the case? <laughs> we won it better it's okay. like a civil case so it, it worked in our favor you probably yeah. can't talk about that shit especially yeah. on adhd so we'll just <laughs> glide right over that so okay so so you get sent home you know the show's airing and then they hit you up and they're like hey wanna and they flip-flop right it goes bachelor bachelorette yeah and is yeah. it always someone from that season before usually but nick was the first time where they went back so they didn't pick a guy from the last Bachelorette season to be the Bachelor. Nick was like, I've been on the show like three or four times. So he's like a serial Bachelor. Definitely. Okay. They, they kind of were like, this is it. This is it it's for you. We're finally going to make you the Bachelor. It's the last hope for Nick Vile. <laughs> and it still didn't work out for him. They broke up. They're not engaged. And he has a dating show. Which he and gives he has a dating show. It's a, I mean, come on. <laughs> Anyways. So, yeah. they. I like Nick, by the way. Me. I just I know we're, we're giving him a hard time on here, but he's really cool. No, yeah. And I do this with him all the time. We, I would do it if he was sick. I had to lift around. him in and out of a coffin like 30 fucking times. Yeah, y'all got real close. We got real, real close. I had to gently caress his head so he didn't hit the concrete. It was, you know, he does all of his own stunts, too, might oh. I add. Oh, 
Okay, well, very good commendable. to know. Very commendable. Good to know. It's ad time. Today's episode of ADHD is brought to you by NC17. If you want some stuff from NC17, hit up nc17xxx.com. Today's episode of the podcast is also brought to you by Blinkist. You've heard me talk about Blinkist on this podcast numerous times before. Shout out to them for being a return sponsor. The problem is that in today's age, it can be hard to find time to sit down and learn more. It's not easy when social media can be so addictive and time consuming. So you may think you don't have enough time to read a book or to develop yourself, but there is an app that I highly recommend. It's called Blinkist. Blinkist is the only app that takes the best key takeaways, the need to know information from thousands of nonfiction books and condenses them down into just 15 minutes so you can read or listen to. Eight million people are using Blinkist right now and it has a massive and growing library from self-help, business, health to history books. I like Blinkist because I can listen to it when I'm driving to and from this podcast. Uh, I'm able to finish books in an extremely efficient amount of time. Some of the things that I've listened to on Blinkist are The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Getting Things Done by David Allen, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, and The Power of Habits by Charles Duhigg. Right now, for a limited time, Blinkist has a special offer just for our ADHD listeners. You can go to Blinkist.com slash ADHD to start your free seven-day trial. That's Blinkist spelled B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T Blinkist.com slash ADHD to start your free seven-day trial. Blinkist.com slash ADHD. Yeah, so they picked me from Nick's season to be Bachelorette. At first I was like, no, this isn't for me. I just didn't know how I would Were you be burned out, out at all? Because you were like, well, the no. first time didn't work. Like, why should I do it again? I wasn't burnt out. I just was kind of like, I'd be the first black Bachelorette. It was an honor yeah. to be chosen, but Isn't at the same cra- time, that's I was That's a complete scary. 360 from what you told your friends when they're like, go to this casting. Exactly. And I thought about that and I thought, oh God, do I want to be the first? Like, that's just a lot of pressure. I don't know how it's going to be received. Am I going to lose credibility as an attorney? There were so many questions. And then I thought, you know what? This is bigger than me. You know, how many like, what if they're like young black girls who are at home thinking, I watch the show, no one ever looks like me, or I had people who stopped watching the show because no one looked like them. So I thought I could represent well. That's how I thought I go, I'm not gonna find love. Like there's no way that a dude that I'm gonna like. Still skeptical. Like no dude I would ever date is gonna come on this show. I I was like, I'm doing this for the culture. That was really my mentality. I mean, I was open for love, but I was just like, no way. And then first night, I'm watching these guys come out of the limo and I'm slowly becoming impressed. And I'm like, I don't know, this might work. This actually might work. And so then it's 10 weeks of filming. And you must feel like like kind of like a vet, though, this time. It must be like less nerd, you know, like you kind of like have like the cards in your favor, you know, because it's kind of like roles are reversed. You would think so. But when you're a contestant, you're just having fun. It's like there's no pressure on you. You're not creating a show. Now it's all about you. And you're trying to figure out like who's full of shit, who's telling the truth, you know, who's like playing, who's here for the wrong reasons. That's you know, a bachelor term. People want to get famous. Yeah. And so like you kind of, this is where my lawyer skills came in because I felt like I could just kind of like. Shit, you were investigating. Yeah. I was like, I know what to ask. I know how to interrogate you. I know how to read through. Like, yeah, I could like cut the shit. Like, like you just keep (laughs) it real with me. So I think that helped me out. And then I just kind of followed my gut and, you know, it worked out. I cannot believe I got engaged on TV. It's still and wild. To how me. long did you guys actually know each other before you got engaged? Okay. It was 10 weeks of filming, but how much alone time we spent? Maybe 36 hours. Max. That's insane. Right? So you imagine- And were like, cameras around the whole time? Except for Fantasy Suite, which is probably like 12 hours. And he was in the Fantasy Suite. Mm-hmm. So what was that first time like for you guys? Like no cameras, like just getting to be yourself. I thought you were going to be like, so how, what was the fantasy suite? Oh my God, suite? come on. What was the fantasy suite? Like I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that kind of show, Rachel. It's not that no. kind of show. Um, well, the first time we were alone, it's scary because you're like, I don't know if this person's psycho. When the producers aren't around. A, yeah. guy, a guy holding a microphone's not around. Yeah, it's it's nerve wracking. But for me, with with Brian, who I ended up choosing, we it was always easy and effortless with us. And so I had like a list of questions where I was like, okay, I want to talk politics. I want to talk religion. I want to talk about how you want to raise your kids. I want to talk about your credit score. I want no to talk way. about, I swear to God. You asked him his credit score? <laughs> I sure did. Was he weirded out? 
No. He I mean, just, just bl- blurted it out. He's like, whatever you want. He's so easygoing. He's just like, yeah, whatever. Next question. Like, when are you going to put the list down? So, yeah. So I just went through everything because I needed to understand him. And we don't get to talk about that stuff on camera because it's not entertaining. But for me, I was really feeling him. And so I was like, I need to know if it's real. I need to see if we're on the same page, like morally. And if we kind of like think the same way. Yeah. And what made him want to do the show? So his best friend signed him up. She calls him one day. So he's a chiropractor. So she calls him at his office and she's like, you need to pick up this phone call. And then she's like, my friend is a casting producer for The Bachelor. Brian's actually a fan of the show. He watches it? Yeah. So he watched your season? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So she said, it's going to be Rachel. I think you'll really like her. You should call the casting producer. So he didn't have to go into an audition. He just called the girl, had a Skype interview, then went to another interview in person by himself. So he cut all that because his friend had the hookup. And then after that, they picked him. Holy shit. So if it wasn't for both of y'all's friends, yeah, you guys would not be engaged right now. No, and it's crazy because a lot of people are like, was it really hard for you dating? So I was 31 when I was The Bachelorette. Brian was 30 and then turned 32. Brian was 37. So for him, he had done like online dating, dated around, been introduced to friends. So it was kind of like, well, why not try this? That was his mindset. For me, I had just come out of this five-year relationship. And then um, I thought like we were gonna be together and it just didn't work out. Like it just, it just we just kind of fell apart. We just weren't willing to make sacrifices. And then the relationship before that, that's a whole nother story. Cause like he, he ended up like having a baby while we were together. And then he just Wait, ended whoa, up completely whoa, 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 disappearing whoa, whoa. and Hold ghosting <laughs> me. And yeah, that was a whole nother drama. I'm surprised I, I still date. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Dated. You dated a guy with a whole nother family. Yeah. So, so this, you can see how I ended so up coming on TV. before going to The Bachelorette was... Was already a TV show. Yes. You, <laughs> so you should have had cameras on your life before that. Yeah, so... And if you, your fiance obviously knows all this, right? Yeah. No, what does no, no. he say? What, what is he like, wait, you dated someone with a whole nother family? Well, he's just kind of like, what were you thinking? And I'm like, I wasn't. I was like 21 when it all started. And by the time it, it ended or without me wanting to end it, but when it ended, I was like 24. So I Okay, was like, so you're yeah. 21, you meet this dude. Yes. Are you in college? I'm in college. To be a lawyer? Um, not yet, not law school, okay. just like, just I didn't know if I was gonna be a lawyer at that point. So I'm in college, I'm in Texas, he's in Oklahoma. So we're in different Long states. Long distance relationship. So it's kind of like the perfect situation to have a whole family without me knowing. Yeah. And totally. He, <laughs> and he was just a guy that that's was like- That's something you want to do. <laughs> yeah, if that's what you want to do. He was like a guy who I was, I had never dated before. Was he so way I was older just, than you? No, we were the same age. 21? Both 21. And I just was infatuated with him because he was just so cool. He was such a cool cat, like nobody I had ever dated before. <laughs> so I was just like, anything he said, I was, I was buying, clearly, right? And so we dated separately and then we stopped dating for like a month, month and a half. And unbeknownst to me, he got a girl pregnant. And then the year goes through and it's like December, December 31st, end of the year. And a friend tells me that this dude has a baby. And I was like, no way. That's my boyfriend. I and think I wouldn't see know. And each other like ran- yeah. Okay, sporadically? Yeah, it's like Christmas break. We're still in college. So he's in Dallas. I'm in Dallas at the time. Oh, oh, and the friend's like, no, I'm pretty sure he has a baby. Calls him, puts him on speakerphone. and Without telling them that you're there. Yes, yeah. That's the down, down ass oh! friend. Down ass friend. This is also the friend that hooked us up. So maybe he felt guilty. And so he said, what oh, are so you doing? So he played his boy like that? He did. He did. <laughs> He totally did. Needless to say, he just became my friend after this. But he puts him he puts him on the phone, speakerphone. He's like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm at the mall with my baby and my baby mama. I was floored. I was like, this, oh my, my boyfriend has a child and I have no idea. So stupid Rachel, a couple of days later, confronts him. He admits it. Matter of fact, when I saw him, he had a tattoo of the child's name name. on the wrist. So I would have seen it eventually. Tells me that he doesn't have this ish, like a relationship with the baby mama. It happened when we weren't together. And it did if I did the math. And I I forgive him. I forgive him. So you're like, okay. Yeah. And so we start dating again. Oh my God. We start dating again. End of the year again. She ends up calling me, confronting me. I tell her I'm in a relationship with him. She tells me she's the baby mama. Tells me she's in a relationship with him. We have hash it out, still end up dating. What? I know. <laughs> still end up dating. And then 
fast forward like maybe like a few months later and then i just call him just like on a regular day like oh it's thursday just want to talk to you and the number is like do 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 the number you've reached is no longer blocked you yeah in service or whatever it says and i'm like okay maybe something's wrong here maybe he didn't well i'm like eventually he did eventually but i didn't know this at this time so whatever i'm calling him goes same message over and over again completely just like disappeared completely ghosted me yeah completely just ghosted me it wasn't until two years later i found out what happened he got engaged he was engaged to the baby mama they were having another baby no 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 two years after two years later they were engaged they have another baby on the Uh, way uh, now they're married and they're living their life happily ever after but that is the relationship i had before my five year and then i went on the show so jesus christ it was insane did those people hit you back? The guy who goes, did he hit you after he saw you on The Bachelor? Well, no, we're we're actually kind of cool. What? So, <laughs> I mean, I gotta you gotta let bygones be bygones. Like I've moved on with my life. He's clearly moved on with his, but I actually talked to him. And so he knew I did The Bachelor. He knew I did The Bachelorette. So you're unblocked. We're cool. Yeah, I'm unblocked. Oh, damn. I'm unblocked. I, I did I mean, look, I've done that shit before. Uh like were you had a whole family no no <laughs> <laughs> no but my palm tattoo i got uh i was like 18 and uh the i was out partying with my friends okay i was young i was mm-hmm. stupid and uh, this girl hits me up on on facebook or i don't she hits me up online somewhere whatever i, I was on when i was 19 you know mm-hmm. and uh she she was from canada and I'm I'm Canadian. I have the maple leaf tattooed on me. But she like lived in Vegas, and I was fucked up. We were out, and somehow, like I was joking, you know. She's like, "Let's hang out." I'm like, "Cool, fl- like fly me to Vegas." And like she was talking about like her visa, and I was like, I joked around like, "Oh, cool, we'll just get married, and like you can like stay there, you know." And she's like, "What's your email and all the shit?" And so I sent her my email, and she's like, "All right, check check your inbox." And there was plane ticket for me in you know in my inbox and this is like i'm talking like this is like four in the fucking morning dude like right so it's like so she she gets me a plane ticket for the next morning and so it's like nine in the morning i wake up i'm like hung over i'm like oh fuck and i'm like what did i get myself into you yeah. know so i have my homie drop me off at the airport and uh i go to the airport it's like an hour flight to vegas and um she texts me and she's like hey i'm like here by baggage claim like let me know you know when you land and i like walk out and i'm like looking for her and she's like not, I, by the way, I've never met her in real life, never talked to her, you know, this is like before FaceTime. Mm-hmm. And so she just has like hella tattoos, tattoos on her face, all this shit. And so like I'm out there, I can't really find her. And I'm, I text her, I'm like, where you at? And this girl comes walking over to me who does not look exactly like the girl that got me the play ticket, okay? <laughs> of course. So I'm like, <laughs> fuck. So I, so this is kind of like a catfish story too, It's I a guess. hybrid yeah, story. Yeah, it's a hybrid. Yeah. So... Uh, I get in the car, I get in the car and I'm like, oh fuck. Okay. Whatever. And she's like, all right, cool. So like, where do you want to like go get married? You know, there's like a chapel here. And so like, I'm thinking fast, right? I'm like, oh, thinking fast. And, uh, I know that like my friends have told me like two places tattoos don't stay is like in your lip and on your palm. And so I'm like, yo, what if we just like, yo, paperwork is crazy. You know, I'm 18. I'm broke. I don't really have money. Like, yeah, this is a funny idea and shit. But like, what if we just like go get tattoos that say just married? And she's like, oh, hell yeah. Like I'm down to do that. So she has a friend who has a shop. She's like, let's go there. Go there. And she's like, where should we get it? Like on our palms. Oh <laughs> Thinking God. she's going to be like, nah, fuck that. She was down. She right? was. Da- she got you a plane she, ticket. She, she agreed to marry you. She's down for whatever. Oh, so like, I'm like, all right. So I'm like, I'll go first, right? Uh-huh. So I get half of a heart that says just married. And uh, I finish up and I'm like, fuck, I'm thinking fast. And she got me a plane ticket, the returning ticket for three days later. Okay. So. I'm like, shit. So I call my friend who dropped me off at the airport. And I'm like, dude, I need you to call me in like 15 minutes and say that like some shit happened with like my family and my sister ran away or something. Like I got to hurry up home, you know? Yeah. And he's like, okay. And I'm like, drive down here right now and pick me fucking up, you know? Best friend in the world. Hauls ass, drives to Vegas from like Riverside in like three hours. Like unprecedented, like hauling ass, right? So I go back in the tattoo shop. She's getting it done. And he calls me and dude, I sound I sound so shitty saying this story. <laughs> Whatever. She's she's getting the tattoo and uh and my phone rings and I, I like I should have won a fucking Emmy, dude, because I'm like, hello? What? Is is everything okay? Oh my god. No, I'm in Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, 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 come get me right now. Yep, I'm ready. I got my bag with me. 
what's wrong? Oh my God, Chad, what, what happened? You know, ugh, I, the family emergency. My friend Kyle's coming to get me right now. Poor girl. I waited like two weeks, got back to LA, covered my hand up with a fucking Apple logo. Never talked to her again. So you've never heard from her? Never. You left her in a tattoo shop. Yep. With a, what, what was the tattoo again? The, just married. Just you married. know those candy just hearts married. that say like, I love yeah. you or like you give them for Valentine's Day? Yeah. It said just married. Let's hope she met somebody like since then she's met somebody and maybe like they have the other half. So now she feels like more complete because that is insane. So yeah, I definitely go. Aren't you her. afraid that she's going to find you? I don't know. I've told this story though, like over the years in multiple interviews uh -huh. and uh, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and look, I didn't mean anything malicious by it. I was 18, I it. you know, like I, I didn't know how to communicate. I think it's really fucked up. Like thinking back, I'm like, oh God damn, I handled that so poorly. And like, I've come so far as a human being, but you know, when you're 18, yeah. uh, you know, you just, you just don't think, but like, I, I would hate to be dating in high school and shit right now with like snapchat and all this shit and instagram because like when you like when i broke up with girls that i dated right when i was yeah. a teenager like that was it we just didn't talk yeah like now you can see like if someone breaks up with you and blocks you and and changes their number and has a whole family like you could see <laughs> that shit on their page every day exactly and you're not strong like mentally like that shit can fuck with you no i think you're right i think you can look at it both ways like oh it's you can at least see what the person is still doing you can track it through social media or it hits you super hard because you see them living their life without you, you and, and any you have part of no it. questions no closure like it's insane and I think it's crazy that i mean your story is wild okay i think <laughs> my story's wild with the whole family that had happened but like you leaving the girl just like i just like see her just sitting i didn't there date her for two years by like herself you. by herself with this half a <laughs> half of just just sitting there like goodbye travis <laughs> goodbye but that's crazy though like i'm telling you i got go hold on i got ghosted okay, uh, so you, i i've been ghosted sides. but it was it was when i was in sixth grade and it wasn't by a girlfriend it was by my homie and it was my homie who we got into music together and he was a DJ and he was really tight. And like uh -huh. we, he used to like DJ like the school dances, you know, we'd listen to like all these like hip hop records. And, um, and one day, uh, it was like after summer, we'd go back to school and, uh, this fool changed his number. This is before social media, you know, we're mm -hmm. in sixth grade, this fool, but he changed his cell phone number. Mm -hmm. Uh, his mom, like I'd call his house, his mom, like be like, oh, he's not here, you know, da, 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 da. So I see him first day back at school and I'm like, yo, what's up dog? Like, da, 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 da. And he's like, yo, man, I can't talk to you. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah. He's like, I went to a, he went to like a religious summer camp uh -huh. over the summer and decided that like any of his friends who weren't religious and like listened to secular music, like he couldn't communicate with. And he threw out all of his records. Like he threw out like all these classic like vinyl hip hop records and just like didn't talk to me for the rest of like, like five, like eight years. That's so sad because you lose a friend, but then he's also telling you like, you're not a good person at the same right? time. <laughs> like that's kind of hard. I got ghosted for God. Like, <laughs> I mean, I guess if you're going to ghost for anybody. Jesus ghosted me. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, I feel like that, the, like I'm telling my ghosting story. It's happened to me, even though it was years ago. Well, you, shit, yo, you've been on both sides. My, of my roommate Davis has been ghosted three times. It's like an epidemic for this it guy. It is an ep Well, it seems like it's an epidemic for everybody. No, it is. That's just how people break up nowadays. But I'm saying like my homie Davis has, yeah, I'm, I'm like constantly, we're, you know, I'm like writing, te I'm a good text writer. Okay. Yeah, I'm a good homie. Okay. I'm a, I'm a good friend. So you're helping Davis out. Yeah. Like, I th wait, wait, wait. Davis, Davis has been ghosted three times, not by the same person. No, of course not. I was gonna say no. He's like but me. Then He's I'll, like I'll like wake up to like emo music and shit. <laughs> yeah, but it must feel good knowing that you're not gonna like your fiance is not gonna ghost you, right? You guys are definitely. I mean, I I hope he's not gonna ghost. When me. are <laughs> when are you guys getting married? I can't say the official date, but Wait, it's oh, August. It's, like, it's under wraps. And yeah, shit? yeah. What was it like after you guys got done filming and then you could actually hang out? Was it weird, like reconnecting? The 24 hours after, so like just to set it up, we're like in Spain, northern Spain. By the way, this, this, that's why this show's called ADHD because we just talk about a bunch of shit. And that's, yeah, like that's for cool. like split. Sorry to like cut you off and no. ask weird. No, I'll pick it up. Whatever yeah. you're throwing at me, I'm ready to answer. <laughs> um, I fit right in. No, so we're top of or northern Spain, got engaged. It was crazy weather day. They're like, season wrap. That's it. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, I've got this ring on my finger. 
I'm standing next to kind of the stranger, right? Who is also my fiance. fiance. They put you, cause before the, sh- the, like while you're filming, you can't ride in the cars together. You can't stay in the same room, obviously. So now they're like, here, you guys get in a car. Brian's stuff is in the back. Um, he's gonna go to your hotel room. So we drive in the car. They go to your hotel room, close the door, and it's just the two of you. Ugh. And I'm like, what if he's crazy? What if he just did this to be, I, I never thought that before, but all those thoughts go through your head. And then like, just talking to him, no cameras around, nobody. Like It was cool. After that night, I was like, we're good. Like I definitely made the right decision and never looked back. Does your family like him? Yeah, they do. I think it was hard for my family to believe that it was real. It was real. Because I left like, I'm not going to like anybody. So I think they thought I was acting the entire time. Did they, they pull you aside before. and be like, Rachel, blink twice if you really want no. this to happen. <laughs> no, blink twice didn't. if you're being held against your no, will. They did it. They just rolled with it. <laughs> then when it was over with, they were like... Okay, so I was like, I'm bringing Brian, to, bringing Brian home. And they're like, oh, the camera's gonna be here, and I'm like, no, this oh, is shit, real life. Real. Like we're engaged, so it took them a long time to adjust. But like now, it's all good. Our what did your parents met. say when your ex ex boyfriend had a second family? My parents hated him the entire time. Yeah, your dad's like <laughs> trying to find reasons more. to like lock him up. They always thought he was no good. So I'm like, you know, so and so has a whole family, and they're like. No surprise. Okay. <laughs> like the, it's almost like they knew the whole time. They were just waiting for me to find out. Yeah, they never really cared for him. So wow. they were probably ecstatic. That's incredible. And so you guys can't obviously talk about the wedding date. Mm-hmm. Um, but are, like are you nervous? Are you excited? You're like one of my only friends that's that's getting married. I'm one of my only friends I've been that's to one, getting married. I've been to one wedding. <laughs> okay, well now it'll be two. Yes. But um yeah, none of my friends are really married either with now that you say that. I'm not nervous. It's kind of like we live together. We've been we've been engaged for 2 years. So I already feel married. It's just now we're just like he's making an honest woman out of me. Isn't that what they say? Yeah. <laughs> and then are you 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 moved, right? Yeah. So he moved to Dallas for the first like year and a half, 2 years really, and then I moved to um miami which is where we are now damn which is where he's from it's cool i travel so much i'm never there but i I mean like it's a it's a good vibe it's like a vacation every day like you can't complain about that and do you like la i love la we might we might come to la for real i think brian would rather be in la than any other city so right now he's like doing his chiropractic thing opening up a firm there does he get get hella clients that like like women and ladies that watch the show like coming to him to be their chiropractor now wait a minute are you trying to make me think a certain way because now i'm like are all these women coming in here to see brian they're fans (laughs) they're fans of the show he gets no he does get a lot of women that are like where's your new office or oh i need help with this and so when he works on me i'm always like is that how you touch your clients when they come in oh! is that, i'm like is that how it is he's not gonna want to adjust <laughs> you anymore <laughs> like, Yo, you're gonna go to my colleague <laughs> no i would definitely say that do you oh that's my women. okay my question right because in my head i'm like dude it'd be dope to be married to a masseuse or a chiropractor yeah do you get adjusted like every day like are you no. like yo babe my neck is you know i'm like tight like help me out no i think i offend him because i'm terrified of getting like adjusted and the popping noise just gets to me i I can count on one hand how many times he's adjusted me oh i'd be abusing that shit. i don't take advantage of it and i i should but i don't so i i mean never my neck i could never let him touch it but my back he's done it a, a few times he's good it just scares me like i'm just one of those people i'm not a good i'm not a good patient Oh, damn. I would be doing that shit all the fucking time. Well, I mean, if he was here, I would just say, like, get on the table. Let him adjust you. Yeah. <laughs> you do it. That's, <laughs> that's going to happen. Uh, and then as far as law, are you still practicing right now? What's? Yeah. I. You know, that's other than when is the wedding? Do you still practice law as like a question? question. Yeah, because that's how people met me people want as you an to attorney. Represent them. They yeah. know that you no know bullshit. I'm always open for business, but I don't practice with my firm anymore. So I'm licensed to practice in Texas. I moved to Miami. I'm still like my license is active and everything. I'm just don't have any cases at the moment because I'm just focusing on other things right now. What do you think of like Kim Kardashian like going to do this like law thing and like Yeah, I think it's crazy that people are giving her like a bunch of shit over it. If she wants to go be a lawyer, fine. Like, I'm not going to knock her. She's actually a very smart person. I'm not going to knock her for wanting to practice law and like use that because she's all about like social reform and social injustice and all of that kind of stuff. And so if she wants to use her degree to make this world better and to help people who have like suffered in the legal system and, you know, shouldn't be there. My homegirl in Dallas actually works with her, Brittany Barnett. 
um, and getting people out of jail that shouldn't be there. It's like, why, why would we knock that? Like, why are we hating on her for wanting to do some good? You guys need to team up. Yeah. No, I mean, hey, Kim, if you're watching. That'd be dumb. <laughs> she, t- she definitely watches ADHD. You never know. That's what she does. She wakes up. She <laughs> checks for the newest episodes. She subscribed, just like you should be as well. Uh, like, subscribe, comment to the podcast. Uh, you also have, but you do a bunch, like, you know, I was uh, I was saying thank you so much for, like, the sports help. But you have a, a show on ESPN that you do. Yeah, every Saturday, 12 to 4 p.m. Eastern. It's called GTL, not Jim, Jim Tan, Tan Laundry. Laundry. It stands for our last names, Goff, Twelman, Lindsay. And so it's just sports talk. So, like, you could tune in, you know, for a quick 10, 15 minutes or whatever. Get, get some educated. sports knowledge. Yeah, like, we cover everything. But obviously what's like big news at the same time but it's great it's fun it's chill most people don't realize that my major is in sports sports management and then i went to law school for sports law no idea yeah so like a lot of people are like oh you're a lawyer oh you're the bachelorette why sports like that's my passion i've always been into it and so it's been fun working with espn and i do like some live twitter shows with them and sometimes i sub in on tv so you're like the the main host are going i am going to the playoffs toronto Toronto. yeah i took your advice (laughs) so okay so what are you calling right here because we're people are going to be able to go back and see your prediction oh god who's taking it I mean, the way things are looking right now, Toronto. it looks like Toronto and Did you see Drake show up in Steph Curry's dad's jersey, Adele Curry jersey? I love the subtle trolling. That is incredible. I love it. Even Steph was like entertained by you, that. What though. can you do? Yeah. What? You got to laugh. You got to be like, all right, bro, you got me. I know. I wonder what like antics he's going to do game two. You know, the NBA sat him down and talked Talk, to him. Yeah, and, like, told him to like chill. Yeah. And they need to. Like but you can't he, touch he the coach and he, do all that. Yeah. He got into it with one of the players after the game. Dray- was it Draymond? I'm so proud of him. You? What? Yes, Draymond. You're proud of me? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that I know. Thank I you. Am. Thank you. You know, shout out Twitter for that uh, little, little useful chunk of knowledge. There you make go. me sound smart. Mm-hmm. But yo, ask me about some UFC shit. That's when I'll feel cool. That's when I'll be like, all right. Yeah, I can't even start. No? With UFC. I mean, I, I don't even think I've ever watched a fight before. What? Yeah. So this is where we can help each other out. Like yeah. I can give you like the football, the basketball, and you can just because UFC is becoming huge. ESPN is like doing all. Oh, the games. they're like fully partnered now. Yeah. Um, it's incredible. Yeah, I, I got to uh, hang out with Tyron Woodley. Do you know who Tyron Woodley is? Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> as soon as you start, I was like, no idea. No. Okay. Is. Yeah, we'll just get off of that uh, right away. Uh, well, yo, thank you so much, uh, you know, for coming to L.A. and doing my podcast. No, thanks for having me. It's a long time coming. But of course. I feel like like I've educated you on certain things. You learned a lot about me and my hand tattoo. Yeah. You know, I got to know you You could have had a second family. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, you know all about my bad relationship I'm, experience. I'm glad, I'm glad that you don't. I'm glad you did find love. <laughs> yeah. After uh, I being learned. ghosted like that. It took me a while, yeah. but I finally got here. <laughs> um, and congratulations. Thank you know, you. Uh, I'm excited for you guys and it makes me happy to know that reality tv isn't just a bunch of fake shit yeah. going on yeah there's so, some yeah <laughs> but not not when it comes to now i knew you would be honest with me uh and that's why i wanted to have you on um why don't you tell everyone where they can where they can find you Yes, yeah, so you can find me. Which where am I looking? Where am I looking? Where Anywhere looking? you want. Okay, that, that one. Bam, probably. bam. I look at all of them. Um, you can find me at the Rach Lindsay on Instagram and Twitter, and of course you can listen to GTL twelve to four p.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio, ESPN app, and Sirius Channel XM. Wait, Sirius XM Channel eighty. <laughs> there we go. I was gonna say I did that you got so that. good. Yeah. Sirius XM Channel eighty. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, if you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and leave me a comment. I love you. See you next week. It's ADHD